Thanks for watching The Modern Man. We're gonna talk about fitness today, something that I personally think every man should take seriously if they wanna take their lives in their own hands. Joining me today, Dustin Lewis. What's going on, man? Pleasure, man. Thanks yeah. for having me. Glad to have you here. Yeah. Uh, of course, the usual suspects as always, Tyler Harris, Charles Russ in the building. Just looking at you guys, it's clear that fitness is something you hold important. I think one of the things about physique, working out and fitness, you know it's, yeah, genetics plays into it a little bit, but it's not something that you're just gifted. Don't, don't bounce. Don't. <laughs> He's already here trying nah, to That's the only reason Joanne Charles is here. <laughs> see, see Andre, Andre is back here messing with me, so uh, I had to give a little bit of, you know. Fair just, enough. Hey, 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 Fair hey. Fair enough. Terry Crews over here. <laughs> that's something that's not gifted, though. When, when, when you see someone, they didn't just wake up like that. That's the result of persistence, hard work, and everything. Why is fitness so important? I can attest to that because I was not blessed with genetics by any means. I was a skinny guy growing up. I'm, I'm still the skinny guy, but I, I work my ass off to get to where I'm going. Um, fitness became a huge part of my life because I was not confident in myself. I was the short guy. I was the skinny guy. Um, and it took a lot of work and a lot of long years and a lot of knowledge uh, to get to where I'm at today. But what I can say is that the amplification of confidence um, in my social circles, with friends, family, influencing other people to live their lives better. I mean, it's, it's twofold. You put in one thing, you get something else out, and it's uh, definitely impacted my life for the better, for sure. Really quick, for anyone that doesn't know who you are, can I give like a quick little elevator pitch on, on what it is you do and how your fitness journey started? Yeah, so like I said, I was real skinny growing up. Um, after college, well, I didn't finish college, so really struggled after school, uh, drinking, partying, and uh, I got to a really low point. And I woke up one day, I'm like, what's the one thing I have control over? And that was my body. So I got certified as a personal trainer. I mean, I just went all in. Different certs, uh, eventually got a bodybuilding coach, went on to win my pro card in uh, Natural Bodybuilding League. So uh, that was pretty exciting. And now I coach other people to get their best bodies, uh, essentially. So, nice. yeah. <coughs> so... What do you think having good personal fitness, a good physique, how do you think that transpires into the rest of someone's life positively? It's confidence, man. It's all confidence. If you look good, you feel good, it's, it's everything. Um, I've, I've been in, in the last five years, I've been in my absolute worst shape I've ever been, and I've been in the best shape that I've ever been. I can tell you that there's a big difference between those two guys. Mm -hmm and what those two guys were doing in all other areas of, of, of his life. Um, fitness is probably one of the biggest areas that overlaps in all the others. Um, your energy level, that confidence goes over into your, your, your business, your career, your relationships. I mean, it's, it's, absolute, it's the foundation of everything. Uh, if you don't have your health, there's nothing. And you know, there's those that that focus on fitness for just the health aspect. I think all of us here kind of take it to that next level of not just wanting to be healthy, but um, wanting to really see what we're truly capable of and what, what our potential is. Um, but man, to me, it's it's confidence. Walking into a boardroom, walking into a networking event, walking to a um, any type of business environment, and you're fit. You feel good. It's just, it's a game changer, complete game changer. And, uh, and it's, and it's, it's a prime example for those around you of your discipline. Uh, and to me that that's, that's crucial is for people to know that you have discipline, um, not to just completely call out the out of shape people that are watching, but if you can't take care of your body, why am I going to believe that you can take care of my money? Why am I going to believe that you can take care of whatever it is that you're saying that you're going to do for me in a sales process or a customer service process or an entrepreneurial environment? If you can't take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of anything else? It's crazy. I mean, he had the nail on the head. Um, the overlap. I mean, we can go everywhere from a point example of a buddy of mine had gained 70 pounds and he swore he was crushing it at work. He's doing some great, but you know, he's not working out. He's not spending any time with killing him because he's tired. He challenged him like, hey man, if you lose that weight and you're back in shape, he's a basketball player. 
because he has a very, very commission-based job. I'm like, you can make more money at work, or you can make the same amount of money in less hours. You'll have the energy to play with your kids when you go home, and you're really just whining about getting up an hour and a half earlier to start the process, to start building. And I, I, eventually I convinced him he makes more money, he goes home, <coughs> he spends time with his kids, he's got the energy left, he's, he's doing those things all because he took that time to work out. Um, you know, if you want, if you want a broader example for my, my conspiracy people out there, why do you think companies are willing to pay for health programs? It, it ain't because they love you that much. Mm -hmm. It's because they know your cognitive ability will be better later in the day. You function better. It, these are facts. Like you don't even have to hide from the facts. So, and that honestly, to me, tails into the personal relationship portion. I'm telling you that this is going to be better for you. It's going to make everything better. And if you're not willing to do that for yourself, how do I know you're going to have my best interests as a customer, you know, as, as your customer, as someone I relate to, even, in, a spouse, even in, in someone that you have a relationship with? I don't want to be 60 years old and have someone that, man, I'm, I'm constantly worried, man, or, or we need to go to the hospital, we have to do this. And yeah, things happen, understand. But things that we have control of, Mm -hmm. You know, you, if you don't care about yourself now, where are we going to be in 30 years? You know, I, am I, am I going to spend my life literally just having to take care of you because you didn't care anything about taking care of yourself? I mean, it's, it's a huge deal. And it, I see that. That's why I'm friends with guys like you. You know, I see that's the first thing I see. I'm like, okay. You know, that's, that's why gym bonds are always great. You always see a dude in the gym. Mm -hmm. He's getting it in. <laughs> And you may never talk to him, but you just so little head nod. And then eventually you see him out somewhere else. Right. And you and do you not immediately talk to him because you respect the work? You've already it's literally gives you a platform. It already gives you a platform to show how hard you're willing to work. Now it's easy for someone to kind of look at where you're at, where you're at, and, and kind of get intimidated, almost like, oh man, well, I can't lift like they can. At some point in time, we all had to start. What is the worst shape you've ever been in your life? I don't know if Charles ever didn't have abs. It's all genetics, remember? You <laughs> <laughs> probably came out the womb with like four already. Good to go. yeah. But what's the worst shape you've been in your life? He came out and was jumper up and with the umbilical cord. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the doc. It's yeah. your set. Yeah. <laughs> don't ever smack me again. <laughs> I mean, I'll, who's going to start? Somebody's got to start. I'll, I'll start. The, the most out of shape I've been, I got suspended from college. I really heavy into drinking. Um, pushed my family away, everybody away. I was eating Little Caesars and Cookout and <laughs> Hamburger Helper, like, religiously. Mm. And I would drink a big bottle of Jack and Coke, like, a huge mug every single night. Um, and you wouldn't know it by looking at me. I wasn't overweight per se, but like I quit going to the gym for like about a year and a half and it was just bad. I didn't love myself. I didn't care to do anything. I worked dead end jobs. And, and finally one day, like I had just got fed up and I'm like, what's, long story short, the one thing that we have control over is our body at the end of the day. You know, what's the most expensive real estate? That's your body. I don't care what you own, what you're capable of doing. If you can't get up off the couch to, you know, create, to take care of your kids, to travel, like you're screwed. So. I realized I was going down a really bad path, and um, yeah, I went all in. But I educated myself too, because there's a lot of quick fixes out there. Like I, I educated myself hard, and uh, eventually looked for help in that as well, because I knew trying to do everything on my own wasn't necessarily the fastest way to success. So that was my low point, and uh, since then I've never looked back, never. I could show up before a picture right now and make you guys cry. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> Well, actually, you'd be confused. You'd be like, who is, who is this person? And honestly, you can see it in my face. Like, I was depressed, too. Like, and, and those two, I think, go hand in hand um, as far as getting in better shape and, and how it affects your emotional shape as well. But, um, but man, I, I, at one point, I was 272 pounds. Mm. 272. I'm 215 right now. Um, so I was big. And, oh, yeah. and it wasn't because I had a ton of muscle, <clears throat> extra muscle, uh, either. Yeah, I mean, I was fat. I was just straight up disgusting. Um, now looking back, like at the time, I didn't really think I had a problem. Like, yeah, 
you know, but still trying to be st- that stylish fat guy and, <laughs> and, uh, and trying to be funny and all that stuff. <laughs> but, but, um, but man, it's, it's, uh, it's humbling when I look back at those pictures, but it, it, that's what drives me now is to, to never, ever let things get out of hand. Cause you think that one, that one combo at Wendy's, you know, late at night, you know, that's not going to hurt anything. And then all of a sudden that compounding effect of, of, uh, night after night and week after week, and you can get, you can get out of shape real fast. Um, genetically, like I can look at a pizza and gain a pound, like just looking at it. Like I, I have sworn all my life that I don't even have a metabolism that, that I only burn calories while working out. Like I just, like I, I just always felt that way. And I used to just get so mad with people like you that you're saying like I was always skinny. Like people, have metabolisms there, like I'm having to force myself to eat. I'm like, kidding me like I can think about eating a carb right now and, and start bloating and uh and that used to always frustrate me because that was a struggle it was always a struggle it's been yeah. a struggle with my family it's been a struggle for me um but it's like okay it is what it is and just gotta put in a little bit more work um and I think for the longest time I tried to outwork a bad diet for the longest time, like forever, I would work out hard enough to be able to eat whatever I wanted. And the final realization that it's just impossible, that you cannot outwork a bad diet. And it sucks, but, <laughs> but you can't. And once things change in the kitchen, man, it's just like game over. Um, not to say that it's not still tough and it's not still a struggle. Yeah. Um, there's a reason why they say sugar is more addictive than cocaine. I believe it 100%. Um, but it's just, man, staying with it and knowing where you've been and having those pictures to remind you every now and then is, <laughs> is good. <laughs> Something you said before, which I really want to kind of jump, dive, uh, dive deeper, deeper into, you talked about the compounding interest and the habits reminded me of a book I read called the slight edge. And mm-hmm. it talks about the, the daily habits and how people often will lose weight put it back on, lose weight, put it back on, because they stopped the habits that lost them the weight in the first place. What are some of the habits people should develop to kind of take control of their fitness? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm a lifestyle guy. Like, yeah. so, you know, I have a few, you know, I, I got my gym, so I have a few training people. I'm a lifestyle guy. You have to change your lifestyle. I don't, I don't even like to give diets. Now, if you were doing something like a show, which I've never done a show ever, you know, but if, if you're doing something like a show, you do a diet for a show, but it, there's a goal, there's an end game to it, uh, because I can give you this six-week diet. It's awesome. Lose all this weight. But when that six weeks is up, the typical person will literally go right back to doing what they were doing before. They're not going to change anything because they made no lifestyle changes. They're like, okay, I have this short-term goal. I'm going to do this for six weeks, and I'm going back to my life. So you have to change your life, and a lot of it's preparation. You know, it's funny. People think, oh, I can't make food. It takes too much time, blah, blah, blah. If you actually will make your food, you'll save money. You'll save the time it took you to drive to McDonald's and drive home. If you do six trips to McDonald's a week, mm-hmm. that's your time to cook all your food for the week right there. Absolutely. And it's healthy. And, you know, it's habits. It's a lifestyle. Make it part of your life. You know, you, people, people have this altered idea of even entertainment. Like, uh, you know, why, why don't you, you meal prep with your girlfriend on Sundays and no meal prep doesn't mean you're doing a bodybuilding show and you're going to starve yourself it's I'm going to make some I got five recipes I want to try for this week and I'm going to make them all on Friday and I'm going to put them all excuse me on Sunday and I'm going to put them all in the refrigerator and I'm going to eat one a week and just try it out that, that actually is fun it can be a lot of fun so it has to be and that's just one example it has to be lifestyle changes working out has to be part of your lifestyle and I don't like how you left me out of the last question Ted <laughs> I mean, I'm just, what was the worst shape you've been in your life, Charles? Four abs? Three abs? Actually, it was after surgery, which was a real weird, had hernia surgery, mm-hmm. six weeks of nothing. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, you can't, mm-hmm. I tell you, you know, if you've had hernia surgery, if you had anything that happens anywhere in your abdominal region, you find out your abs are attached to everything. Mm-hmm. If you sneeze, it hurts. You lift mm-hmm. your leg, it hurts. You, it hurts. So it's six weeks of nothing. And the push to get back, I overdid it. So I had a hernia surgery, and then I tried to push back to get hard, and I did something. So four weeks after I started working out, redid the whole thing. So it's another six weeks of nothing, and that was 
that was literally the worst because I mean it, it just it was what it was. And the doctor actually uh, told me he's like, dude, you have to eat because I can tell you're one of those guys. You don't want to. You have to eat because your body needs it's calories. Real. It needs yeah. it to repair. So it was, that was messy. But I will also say I got really heavy once. It was more of a bodybuilding type of heavy. And this is just my honest opinion. I got uncomfortable. Like I couldn't stretch. Mm-hmm. Um, I was coaching wrestling and I couldn't actually like show moves. I was like, hey man, get down here and show him this because I didn't want that. I didn't want to care. And it was cool. It, it looked cool, but it was not, it's not for me. It's not my body type. It's not my body frame. I mean, I wrestled 141 in college. So for me to be over 200 pounds, mm. yeah, that, that was not. So I actually would put those two next to each other. And some people were like, no, but it was cool. I'm like, I wasn't healthy. It wasn't good for my, my mental state. It wasn't good for anything. It was a lot of pain, joints hurt. Two flights of steps was sweatshop instantly. Mm. So, shoes, yeah. Bro. Oh, yeah. Sit down. You had, I had to sit down and tie my shoe. No joke. Oh, yeah. Was no bending over. Something each of you kind of touched on about the worst, worst shape was where you were in life. You were saying you're in a bad, bad place after college. You were saying you were in a bad mental state. And how important is it to have mind and body in sync when talking about fitness? changed the, dire- the direction of my life. Like, I didn't finish school, but because I became so confident in myself, I started hearing from other people, like, you look great, what are you doing, this and that. And I, I felt this sense of purpose again. Dude, I was banging on job, like doors for jobs that I didn't know what they required. And I ended up getting a job that needed, you know, you need a college degree and blah, blah, blah. But like, it's because I was confident and I believed in myself. And then every person I've ever interacted with, like, yeah, they respect somebody that they will obviously look like they take care of themselves. Um, so for me, yeah, it was, it was, it, it bled over instantly into every other area of my life and, uh, it, it became its own high. Like I, I had to have more of it. I wanted more of it now, obviously to an extent, is it healthy? But, um, yeah, it changed everything for me, uh, to running my own business now, like, because I'm caught, like the, I decided to coach, not because I'm so good that I won a pro card, right? It depends on who I'm competing against and whatnot. But once I won my pro card, like for me, like I do know what I'm doing. Like I'm confident in this. Let me help other people do this now too, because like this is what I'm truly passionate about. It's changed my life so much over the last four years. Let me help other people do this too, the right way, obviously. Um, so that that's sums it up for me, for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, you said about how I was depressed when I was in the worst shape of my life. I was, I'd, I'd, I had been battling through a really bad divorce. Um, was drinking way too much during that period of time. It was kind of spiraling out of control. Um, went through that divorce. And it's so funny when you talk about like, in, you know, what was the inspiration? What was the motivation to like get back in shape? Very easy. I was now date, trying to date again. You know, like I needed to look good without my shirt off. <laughs> Plain and simple. Like that, like literally, like all of a sudden I was like, oh, crap. I'm not married anymore. And I am disgusting. Like no one is, no one is gonna wanna, gonna wanna give with this. And, and it was literally just like being real with myself. I'm like, this is not good. We gotta do something about this fast. And uh, and I lost 50 pounds. I went from like 272 to like 220. Um, and literally, like right after I got to like right in the like 220, um, I met my now wife. <laughs> and it is so funny because we were talking about this uh, a while back. And so someone asked her, so like, well, you know, what if what if you'd have seen this before picture laying by the pool? Because we met at the pool, like we literally met at the pool. It was the other lofts, the lofts of Greenville. Um, we met at the pool. He's like, what if this would have been laying out by the pool versus this? And she very flat out, and I don't blame her. Was just like we wouldn't be talking, right? Like we wouldn't be sitting here. And not that there, not like it was like some shallow thing, but like out at the pool with your shirt off, like that that right. first conversation that that was sparked to us hanging out that night. Like it is what it is. Like, so for me, like literally my motivation was like, I'd like to look good naked yeah. again. <laughs> and it wasn't pretty. So we got to make some changes. <laughs> that's so true. Cause my girlfriend says the same thing. She saw my before and after picture. And she's like, I'm glad that's before we met. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she seen Fat Ted? She, she seen Fat Ted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For fat, anyone that doesn't know, I mean. I, fat I Ted was, was a thing for a little while. I was really skinny for, for a long time. I, I graduated high school. I was the smallest person on my varsity football team. I was 135 pounds. Wow. Soaking wet. Went to college. 
and then you know that came with a lot of uh, beer consumption and not working out and then when I when I graduated from college that kind of habit continued and then even to the point when I moved to Greenville I wasn't consistent in the gym but when I went to the gym I didn't know what I was doing diet wasn't there and the alcohol consumption was excessive and um, also the mindset before that just wasn't there I wasn't in that full self-growth confident mindset didn't take responsibility for my surroundings so <coughs> that was the start of a turnaround funny thing is when I first started working out with Charles he always laughs because he says I remember when you could barely do 135 I, I couldn't even get 135 off my chest and uh, now that's, that's what we warm up with so it's definitely come a long way on that journey anyone that was trying to start the journey um, how long should they expect to be in it well, the journey never ends. Um, that's, the, that's the cool part. It doesn't end, and it's great because you can always do different things. It's, it's like I changed my workout, changed my style of working out. You know, sometimes I'm doing the basic heavy reps, pyramid sets. So I, I do that. You know, it's, that's how you build basic mass. But then there's times I like to superset, and there's times I like to, to giant set five exercises and run a sprint between. I just want to do different things. It's a constant journey um, to kind of build because there's always a give and take. There is always a give and take. You want to be bigger, you got to eat more, you're not going to be as lean. You know, there's always a give and take. So to build that ultimate goal, it's just like building a business. You know, it's, it's the effort that you put in. There's so many parallels with fitness and life. Um, and, I, and I do want to clarify for everybody who's listening. We say fitness, I'm not just saying go to the gym. Mm -hmm. We're talking about diet, you know, mental health. All that stuff is your, is your fitness, your health plan. Um, and I think we all kind of agree on the whole... Uh, you have to improve your whole life. You can't just go one, I'm just, I'm just going to do this and forget the rest of my life because that doesn't work. It'll work to a certain extent. And all my buddies know my favorite example is a table. You lift one leg on a table, eventually you have two options. You stop lifting or you flip the table. Hmm. You have to lift all four legs on the table or six legs, whatever. You have to lift them all. And... You know, and, and I do put the, the fitness leg up front because you can't do anything else. You know, I want to provide for my family. That's why I'm working so hard. Yeah, but if you drop because you're out of shape, all that goes out the window. Well, you know, I, I want to be able to, to take my kids here and there. Yeah, how are you going to take them somewhere if, if you weigh 300 pounds? You actually can't walk them around mm -hmm. because you're tired. Fitness, if you're not healthy, none of this is going to matter. You know, I, I, one of my buddies always says, he, he's a trainer, he says, you can pay me or you can pay a doctor. <laughs> Overall, I'm a lot cheaper than a doctor. <laughs> so you make your pick. Um, and he's right. And then it's, there's so much, it just bleeds into life. It bleeds into what I see in, in each of you. That's why we're all friends. I mean, you know, I do want quality, to be around quality people and I see that you take care of yourself. Because I can't expect you to take care of me or anything that I have going on if you don't take care of yourself. And that's, that's always, that's a common belief. And when I say take care of yourself, no, you don't have to have a six pack and, and 30 inch arms. <laughs> Be in some type of physical shape. If you're a runner and you're, you're real slim, but you, I see you pounding out 10 miles a day, I, I much respect for that. You're in shape and that's what makes you happy. You know, so it's just do something, man. Keep yourself together. And to allude on that, I always like to ask like what, do people think of the term fitness as being? And to me, fit is the ability to, or the capability to what? Like, what's your goal? What's your why, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have a family to provide for? Is, does, you know, obesity run in your family, diabetes? Like, are there th things that you need to do to prepare for a better future? So fitness doesn't have to be pumping iron. I will say, I think resistance training to some extent is important as our muscle does atrophy over time and our uh, bones become less dense. So that's important. But if you love to run, run. I don't run. I see Tyler runs all the time. I hate running, but I like to mountain I bike. about all the time. All the time. Okay. Well, <laughs> more than I do. More than I do. <laughs> more than I do. So you, you got to find what works for you. It could be picking up old sport again. I mean, it could be, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be about the gym necessarily. Um, and you got you to gotta take steps, you know, baby steps. You're not going to change your diet, your workout. You're not going to change all that, your mindset, your schedule in one day, right? If you're not drinking enough water, start there. Yeah. If you're not eating vegetables, start there. Mm -hmm. um, there there's, there's a lot of small things that you can do 
that really add up that people neglect looks. There's a lot of fads out there and we live in a society of instant gratification. And this worked for Johnny, so I'm gonna give it a try for two months and, well, and that doesn't work. And it, uh, you gotta be a little bit smarter when looking for that information because it's so available, mm -hmm. right? And there's like you had said when you were talking to Ted earlier that it's not, there's not all, a whole bunch of good information out there. Like there's a whole bunch of bad information too. You know, it, it goes both ways. So you gotta be wary, but start small. Start small. It, it doesn't have to be anything crazy mm -hmm. at all. And it's that compounding, that slight edge you mentioned, which is a great book. Um, think about how long it took you to get there. <laughs> I mean, you didn't get fat overnight. Right. No. You may have been fat for a while, but you didn't become out of shape or overweight or whatever that looks like for you overnight. So it's not going to change overnight. Um, but it's making, with, with that book, he talks about showing up, showing up consistently, showing up consistently over a long period of time, and, and, under, and understanding that. Um, now I can tell you if, if, if you're able to go all in, then after a couple of weeks, you're going to start noticing little changes. And, mm -hmm. and that to me is where momentum kicks in. And it's just a, it's a game changer for your mindset, but you're going to have to just understand on the front end that there's going to be a period of time where you're not going to necessarily see changes where the scale might actually go up because you're building a little muscle mm -hmm. and you get even more frustrated, but that it's a process. And and my biggest encouragement is that if it's not something that you can do, if you're currently in a situation where you're out of shape, overweight, that it may not be something you can do by yourself. If it was, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation. So hiring a trainer, getting a gym membership, having accountability is the biggest thing. When I talk to people about accountability in, in, in their fitness, it's, it's simply having someone at the freaking gym going, it's five o'clock, Charles is supposed to be here, where the heck is Charles? Yeah. Like that tiny little amount of accountability can make all the difference in the world from Charles showing up on his own. Um, it's, it's amazing how people all of a sudden decide like, I'm gonna get back in the gym and think that somehow now they're gonna have this huge drive and, and, and motivation just out of the thin air. Mm -hmm. uh, you, gotta, you gotta know the areas where you struggle and you got to enforce accountability in those areas to make sure that you do what you're supposed to do. Um, and, and back to what you were saying about um, prepping meals, um, there's so many meal prep companies yeah. popping up left oh, and yeah. right. Like Boom. I used to prep all my food on Sundays with my wife, and I guess we didn't do it the fun way that Charles does it, and, <laughs> and I just grew to hate Sundays. Like, uh, like we go to church, we get home, and I'm like, crap. and Because I'm usually traveling, so I leave yeah. Sunday night, and I'm like, crap, I got like six or seven hours of cooking to do before I leave. And it just got to be this, like, we dread it, you know? Sure. Yeah. Um, but there's so many meal prep companies out there. I've used a couple of different ones, and, and they're popping up in every city, every town. So there's no excuse. I know there's one, I'm not going to plug any names, but there's multiple that are nationwide. Yeah. Um, so there's no excuse not to at least have them. And it ends up, people think when they look at it that it's more expensive, like, oh, $9 a oh, meal? Really? It's, it, it always ends up being more efficient in the long term, that, that's for sure. Save you time. But I think that's an awesome kind of transition when we're talking about fitness and you talk about meal prep and food and everything. Uh, I know, Charles, you do the intermittent fasting. You're, you're doing keto. I've done mm -hmm. keto for a while. There's a lot of different diets out there. And for some people, they might try that diet, try this diet. Is one good one better than the other. I mean, I know a lot of people have their opinions of keto, their opinions of intermittent fasting, their opinions of, of paleo. Kind of talk about diet a little bit and, and what you think people should try or, or lean towards. I'd love to share a statistic real quick. Yeah. Sure. So six out of seven people that diet can will lose a significant amount of body fat. They will. After one year, 60% of those people will regain all that weight. After mm -hmm. two years, 85% of those people will regain all that weight. And after three years, 95% will have gained all that weight back. <laughs> and of that 95%, one to two thirds will have actually put on additional body fat. <laughs> so it's wow. not a matter of what works. Obviously, a lot of stuff works. It's a matter of keeping it off. Mm -hmm. Which So I don't care what people do as long as it's sustainable for them. And it's about, like Charles said, changing your lifestyle. It's your habits, habit stacking. What one thing can you do here? Do that for a week, two weeks, tack on the next thing. Um, and it's personal preference, you know. 
I've done a little bit of everything. Uh, I like to track my calories. You know, wall of thermodynamics is you can't, energy cannot be created or destroyed. You eat too much, you're going to gain too much. You, you don't, you don't. Um, but that's what works for me, too. And I'm also trying to put on weight. And if I don't eat enough, I won't gain weight. It's hard for me to eat. Sorry, Tyler. It's hard for me to eat enough to gain weight. <laughs> like, it really is. So I, I've got to, right now, I've got some Pop-Tarts and stuff I don't necessarily eat in my oh, diet. Like, man. and I don't feel necessarily great about it. My skin's not as clear as it used to be. But, like, I've got a goal. I want to compete 10, 10 pounds heavier. That's my goal. This is what I have to do. I still eat clean. Like, I, I, I have all my vegetables. I hit all my micronutrients, my fiber. All that's taken care of. But for me to eat another sweet potato when I could just have a Pop-Tart for the same amount of calories, it's a lot easier to eat the Pop-Tart. So that's where I'm at. It's like, it just is. Like, and I, I hate that for some people, but I've also worked where my metabolism is this high, too. So I, I, I don't want to say I've earned it, but in a sense, um, yeah. So, earned but if it Pop-Tart. works for you, yeah, I earned it, you know. And, I love yeah, Pop-Tarts. Yeah, absolutely. It's so good. Yeah. What flavor? Um, these, are, these are chocolate. They're not the actual Pop-Tart brand. They're like a more yeah. natural brand. Wow. But, uh, now we're asking the real questions. <laughs> I like the s'mores. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, just sugar, chocolate, cinnamon. man. Chocolate. There's two types of Pop-Tart eaters. They either like, like the strawberry, blueberry one, or they're all about like the, the, the icing sweet. versus sweet. the not icing, too. That's yeah, a, I, don't, I don't know how you do not icing. Terrace, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually take the edges off. <laughs> that's what I heard, Terrace. <laughs> Non-frosting. <laughs> Pop-Tarts. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious what, what puts you towards on onto keto because it's obviously worked great for you and you're So it. for me, like everything I do is like all in or all out. Right. And for me, keto, like being able to completely cut the carbs and sugar from a um, temptation standpoint. So like if I think like, man, I would love to eat this pizza. Right. Right. The thought process of me thinking – Okay, well, if I eat it, I'm going to come out of ketosis. It's going to take like four to five days to get back in. That's going to suck. That, like, 10 seconds of me just thinking about that, I'm like, ah, I really don't want that bad. It's not worth it. Um, So for me, it's just like the ability to have to be all in um, just makes it it more simple because it's like it's so not worth the cheating because you're going to feel like garbage coming out. You're going to feel like garbage going back in. But when you're in ketosis, you feel incredible. Like my energy level, mental clarity – Um, It's huge, Um, but it sucks. I mean, like lifestyle, like it's, it's not, you get used to it, but like, man, sugar and bread. Can I ask you, because I I did keto for a while and I guess. I remember the day you quit and I was pissed off. I sent you a message. (laughs) I was like, bro, I was like, bro, I need some support here. Like, I need to know that you're hating your life too. (laughs) Don't leave me. I said, Charles told you that you can't have make gains on keto. Charles lied. <laughs> but I, I'm interested to know because I think one of the biggest challenges with keto is that social aspect is when I would go to an event and they're like, oh, you're in seeing the event. We have snacks for you. And it's like chips and crackers and stuff. And I'm like, no, thanks. I'm good. And I'm like, so you're not, you're not hungry. I'm like, uh. I ate before I came because I knew I couldn't eat what you're offering. Even when you go to a party and someone's like, oh, here's here's a beer. Like, oh, I'm not drinking beer anymore. I'm not doing that. How is that social interaction? I mean, to start because eventually you can train people around you to accept what it is you do. Now, one thing I will I will actually disagree with that one. So intermittent fasting. So my best my best time ever. So when I lived in Germany, I wouldn't eat until two. Sounds weird, but so my window, excuse me, four. So it's four to midnight was my window. And that sounds weird, but yeah, eight hours. So it, it, but with me being a financial guy, the US stock market was still open. So it, my hours were so different. Um, and so then, and I, I slept in later. I didn't get up as early. I typically would start my work day around 10 or 11. So it wasn't like I'm up at five o'clock and dying. It, it was convenient for me. So the conversation would be I'd go to a lunch meeting and I always just get black coffee. It's 12 o'clock over there. I'm not eating for hours. I need black coffee. And they'd always be like, well, why, are you, why aren't you eating? And it would literally give me an opportunity to explain. So, and, and if we go down that rabbit hole, rabbit hole, probably dude that's out of shape or not in as good a shape as I am, added value. Oh, this, this, this dude's telling me about fitness. So you get the added value thing, which I know mm-hmm. Tyler's huge on when you add that value. I listen to Silver Wolves. I understand. <laughs> um, you know, and it's just an interesting conversation. Yeah. It, it, and I'm sharing some of myself with them. This is what I do. This works for me. This is why I do it. And it was just the initial conversation. 
none of them ever took it as really being like offensive. I, I want you to eat. Actually, I'm paying for your lunch, so please eat. Mm -hmm. We're having a meeting anyway. I'm basically pitching to you that I'm a financial guy, so I'm gonna do most of the talking. Because actually, when I, when I eat with someone, we both order, and it's an actual meeting. What I find is they're done eating, and I still have most of my food. Mm -hmm. So it's always worked out that way, because I'm doing the talking. I'm talking, talking. I don't want to put food in my mouth. And that's always worked out. So that challenge and that interest yeah. they have, and that value I can provide to them as being someone that they can talk to about being healthier. Have you ever had the question, uh, and when I was on keto, I got the question a lot, and any of you guys kind of being strict with your, your food and whatnot, have you ever gotten that question from somebody like, oh, because you look like you need to be in a diet? Oh, that's you don't look I've like you need to be diet, in a diet. And that's what they don't what's understand. Your, yeah, what's your response? It wasn't a start. You know, and barrier and entry is, is a problem in a lot of industries, not just health. But health is probably the most important one. Same with the fine, with a, if I explain numerically, if a guy comes to me and he's $50,000 in debt, but you're staring at this guy who has $500,000 in his bank account, and that's bothering you, so you're not reducing your debt because this guy has $500,000. It doesn't make sense. You have $50,000 in debt. If this time next year you only have 35, you did great. Don't worry about the guy with 500. He has nothing to do with you, where you are, at this exact second in time. Same with fitness. That nobody else matters. When you walk in a gym and you see all these big guys and these girls are shredded and clear your mind, go in with your goal in mind. Because all you should be worried about is being better than the person when you leave, be better than the person you stepped in with. Don't, you can't compare because you're never going to win that battle. We're all in shape, but I guarantee you we could all walk into a place. There's some gym somewhere that we could all walk. We could walk in as a group like we're about to get it. Mm -hmm. And when there's a gym somewhere, we'd all walk in there and be like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know about this. Maybe we are in the wrong place. That gym exists. I guarantee you it exists. But that's not the mindset that we have, and that's not the mindset we shouldn't have, and that's not the mindset we're trying to share with other people. Just get started. Just be better than who you were yesterday. Take where you are and, and set a goal so at some point in the future and go that way. So that diet question, oh, you just don't, yeah, because I've always been doing this. People are like, well, you just have never had to, to be out of shape, but if my life has been, I mean, we all, you know, I know, like, we both wrestled in high school, so I wrestled all through high school. I went to military college and wrestled for a division one. There wasn't time to get out of shape. I left, so right after college, I went to the military and I deployed. There wasn't time to be out of shape. I'm an officer, I'm in charge of 30 guys. I'm not getting out of shape. It's part of my job to be in shape. Mm -hmm. I stopped doing that, and as soon as I got out of the military, I was coaching a high school wrestling team. I gotta be able to get out there with these kids and show them what, there's not time to be out of shape. So no, you're, you're right. I may not look like I need to be on a diet, but I've never let myself get to that position either. You actually have a, show them a picture. Like, yeah, yeah. We'll do this. It's not I mean, we'll, we'll try and get some, uh, if you guys want to share some of your, your before pictures, we can try getting some of that up in post-production so people can kind of see at the beginning of the episode, like where we started before getting to this, this point. What do you want to say to somebody that's watching right now, thinking about starting the fitness journey, and they're like, so I can never eat a donut again? I can never have a hamburger? Because we're talking about lifestyle, and obviously you don't want to just, you Tyler saying, hey, jump all in. Everybody might not have that same mindset, but still, regardless, there are sometimes we can cheat, quote unquote, cheat day or cheat weekend. When I did keto for an extended period of time, it was, after three months, I had a cheat week. And the reason I had a cheat week was because I'm like, if I'm gonna be in keto flu for a day, like I'm gonna stretch this bad boy out. <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna be miserable for a day for one meal. I had a list, I was like, okay, I'm gonna have some donuts, some brownies, some chocolate chip cookies. Oh, yeah. We're gonna go to Wendy's, I'm getting cheesecake. I abused my cheat week. Did you get cheesecake at Wendy's? I didn't get cheesecake at Wendy's. I said, go to Wendy's and get cheesecake. I was like, I didn't even know they had cheesecake. You're like, wait, that's not doing that. That's that secret menu. <laughs> I know y'all got a cheesecake in the back. That's for me. No, I think, I think, I can't really remember what the question is. If someone's but, like, if someone's timid to hop into fitness. Oh, yeah. And they're, they're worried about sacrificing the, the finer things in life. The, the hamburgers that they love so much, the donuts mm -hmm. that they love so much, the carbs that are, are so tempting, the sugar yeah. that so many people are addicted to. I think it's figuring out what the why is. Just like, I mean, we talk about so much. What's the why? Um, 
And if, if, <laughs> if, if you can't create a why, a why will be created for you when it comes to your health. Mm. Like after that first heart attack or after you get diagnosed with diabetes or after you're, they're putting you on blood pressure medication or something like that. Um, but having a why before then is a whole, <laughs> a whole lot better <laughs> scenario. Um, and, and having that at the forefront of, of everything you do. But man, I think the biggest thing is like nothing, nothing fires me up than seeing an uh, overweight dude, an overweight lady on the treadmill at the gym. Like, man, I love that yeah. because like I understand that it takes a whole lot to start. It takes so much motivation and getting uncomfortable and, and, and out of your comfort zone to go to a gym where you know there's going to be people looking at you. You know what people are going to be thinking and to do it anyways, like that to me is like I have the utmost respect and I can't stand when people talk about like January, you know, New Year's resolutions. And I got all these people. I got to just wait, you know, six weeks before I never see them again. I'm like, screw that. Like, I love, I love, I love seeing that. But understanding that like it's only awkward if you make it awkward. Back, back to what you were talking about, like when you're eating or you're at a certain thing and you can't, you can't eat. It's only awkward if you make it awkward. Like, if you make it awkward, like, sitting there with your Tupperware, like, <laughs> like all, looking all sad, you know, or you can just own it, like, just completely own it. And they're like, huh, wow, that's cool. And like, I, I went to a training in Atlanta Friday, and it's time for lunch, and I didn't know, but they had catered in Jimmy John's. And all of a sudden, I get handed a sub, and I'm like, dang it. So I took my sub, and I was like, I'm going to eat out in the uh, lobby. And I walked to Chipotle. It was like right down the road. And I nice. ate a salad at Chipotle. Nice. And I threw the tub in the trash. <laughs> and then I came back and I was like, man, lunch is good. Let's get back to this training. You know, but like, it's just how, how, how you make it. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a lifestyle. And if you treat it as such, then it's just the way you live your life. Yeah, so I'll add on that too. Owning is huge. And like, usually the people that are going to say something, they're, your friends or your family, they're your social circle. Be like, this is my decision. Do you support me or not? And just call, call them out. And so they're not calling you out. Call them out on their ignorance or, or why they think it's necessary to say something. And be like, this is a choice for me. You know, do you support me and, and me wanting to be better for myself or not? And usually, well, that'll flip the script real quick. Um, mm-hmm. You might even see them start making changes. But where to start, if you need to lose 100 pounds, like, you need to lose 100 pounds. Like, you don't need to go be Mr. Olympia doing this and that. If you've never been in the gym before, I always tell people, walk in, get on the treadmill. If you don't even want to walk on the treadmill, leave. The next day, walk in, spend five minutes on the treadmill, leave. You don't have to do anything, right? Like, just, it, it's this habit that we're creating. You gotta get comfortable. If you've never meditated before and you had to go in a room with a whole bunch of people and sit down and meditate, it'd probably feel really weird. Like, I've never done this before. Like, what's going on? All these, am I doing it right? Are these people going to judge me? Same thing when you go into a gym. Um, so start there. And then if, if you're a skinny guy that wants to put on muscle, like, either do your homework, science-based research, or, or find somebody. Either way you want to go, I, I think getting help in, in any aspect of life, life, business, you know, finance, uh, health, wealth, um, Find somebody that's done what you want to do and invest in yourself. Like, you, you pay, you put some skin in the game, you're probably going to work a little bit harder when, when you've got some money on the, on the shelf due to it. So, uh, yeah, that would be my two cents on where, how to get started. Yeah, I mean, you, you hit it right in the head. Just start where you are. Don't worry about it. Put yourself in a total, totally blindfold yourself to where everyone else is. Don't blindfold yourself to their help, but to where everyone else is because that has nothing to do with you. Start where you are, in whatever it is. Start where you are and improve that. Also, one thing that you guys talk about, that but just saying that we call it physical health, it's not physical at all. It's such a mental thing. Those donuts that you love. <laughs> Honestly, I don't have the right word. I don't want to use a word that would offend me, words that would offend anyone, but I will just say it bothers me sometimes when I hear people talk about food like that. I love this. I love that. And it's almost like it almost makes me cringe. I'm like, but why? Like it's a dependency. Because you have an emotional attachment to it. Because it's not it's not doing anything positive for you other than fulfilling a second need. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. But, but, you know, but I'm talking about every day because there's also the post donut feeling. That sugar drop off, that 
that uh, yeah. like I'm a big like I'm a I'm a big like I'm a junk food guy. My girlfriend will tell you like I want to get I want nachos, I want tacos, I like burgers. I I consider myself a burger kind of sewer. Now I will eat a burger in a minute, but I also know what those 18 slices of cheese, that great buttered toasted bun. I know how I feel the next, not even that, not the next morning. I know the feeling that it creates. Like it's like, it's it's just there. It's like two days later, I'm like, nope, she's still with me. So it's 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 a mental thing. It's changing your mind, it's changing your mind. And by changing your mind, it's, some people say the 21 day, the whole 21 thing, 21 days to make a new habit. That's like with the treadmill, if you just, just go. Give me 21 days straight, just start. And honestly, if they would do it, they see a difference. Now, if you don't change anything else and you just add 500 calories of fat burning a day, mm -hmm. you will see a difference in 21 days. You don't even have to change your diet yet. And that would probably spark them, but it's just, you gotta start. And you have to know, if it doesn't do enough for you to know how much this thing is gonna benefit everything else in your life, then I almost don't know what to tell you because it's such a mental thing. You know, even the, the building process, you're teaching yourself of what you're capable of. Yeah. You're showing yourself that, dude, look what I did with this. What else can I do? Yeah. It's amazing. I love it. Uh, I think that's a great, great stopping point right there. Dustin, man, thank you so much Pleasure. for joining us today. Yeah. And uh, really the main point got to take away is, is just start. Don't get overwhelmed. The journey of 10,000 miles starts with the first step. It's a, Chinese proverb, uh, but you got to start. That's, that's the number one thing. This is going to be the foundation for everything else in your life. Practice the discipline, practice the mindset of showing up and build accountability with somebody if you have to. Whatever you need to do, it's important to take your fitness seriously. Start today and of course, maybe even reach out to one of these guys. Reach out to Dustin if you need some guidance and some help because it's all about getting started. Go out there guys and be a modern man.